How does your physical location affect your relationship with nature? How does it affect how you interact with nature? How you cultivate nature in your own home? To answer these questions, I interviewed a rural gardener, a suburban gardener, and an urban gardener. Let's meet them. Our rural gardener, Timothy Potts, lives with his wife, Lou Kahn's around 10 acres about eight miles away from campus. They are both master gardeners. Lisa Bruce is our suburban gardener. She lives on Pomfret Street in a three-floor home less than a block away from Dreyer. She does not consider herself much of a gardener. On High Street, a few blocks past Hanover, our urban gardener Jason Turner lives in an apartment. He is an avid gardener inspired by his career as a chef, but his landlord doesn't allow him to plant anything in the ground. So let's get into it. It's partly a personal philosophy, and that is, I think everyone, myself in particular, needs beauty in their life. They need to be part of creating beauty. And that's what I get most enjoyment out of. It's not vegetables. I could care less about the vegetables, <laughs> except when I'm eating them. But of course. <laughs> most, of, most of my time is spent trying to create beauty. Well, I like nature. <laughs> I like the yard to look kind of nice, mm -hmm. even though we have multiple dogs and it's hard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would hate to just, just be grass or nothing. I yeah. like shade. <laughs> and so once you kind of do it, it's, it's kind of addictive because it's relaxing, you know? And so as a chef, it's a really intense, I'm moving stuff around and catering events and stuff like that and doing a lot of different projects. So gardening is kind of that, like that Zen moment where I can be like, all right, I'm going to put you in here. I can't really do anything. Like I can manipulate a lot of things during my day, but like you guys, I just got to give you some water and sun. There you go. And I hope, I hope it works well. And, Not to have a garden, but to do something beautiful mm -hmm. with their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I also sing with the college. I've been doing that for 50 years. Really? That's a, yeah. That's another source of great enjoyment and, and you know, in healing. When life insults you, flowers just bring you back. Mm -hmm. And so does singing. I think if they have property, they should. And I think they should try and grow something besides grass. Cause Grass uses like a lot of chemicals and water and it's sort of good for nothing. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you planted vegetables or fruit or flowers, you have something. Mm -hmm. And it attracts, you know, and provides space for birds and bees and whatever. That access to it just it literally being right at your fingertips to be able to, to just grab and have, you know, changes the way you eat, the way you think about food. And and Again, I guess back to the whole paying attention, you're paying attention to the sun, where the, where the trees are, you're kind of paying attention to your surroundings a little more, which is the first step in like paying attention to your community. Like it's, it's kind of, it's the gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> Not understanding well enough what it takes for some plants to thrive in places I want them to thrive. And sometimes it's just not possible, but sometimes if I, if I tended the soil better, I'm sure they would do better. Mm -hmm. uh, I, boy, I hate it when we lose a plant. I just hate it. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They dig in things, they pee on things, they chew on things. Yeah. Not so much mine, but we foster, and the mm -hmm. fosters are really damaging to the garden. Yeah. Plus, we've had a couple of rough winters and have lost a lot of stuff. Yeah, gardener. Space, yeah. Um, um, my, my biggest limitation is probably the fact that I, later on in the season, I'll end up having catering projects and stuff as a chef. And so my neglect for my garden around August and September becomes a little bit um, other than that, space is the biggest one. Um, not knowing how to help get into a bigger space and pursue something larger. Like, um, I guess all these kind of, all these projects are leading up to a, a project of mine that I want to do. Um, and it's going to involve space, ducks, and farms, and cooking. Um, 
and it's a, it's a farm for veterans with PTSD. That's amazing. Um, and I want them to come out and work the land, uh, have animals to take care of, and I'd like to have some treatment options available for them, yoga and, and meditation and stuff, because these are the treatments that work for me. You know, mm. Ducks, bugs, and things like that, that, and they have a really positive impact, and they get tomatoes, you know what I mean, and eggs, and, um, so I guess like regulations in space are the biggest biggest um, ones because I you know because this isn't my space I can't really dig in right. and I can't so you know everything's got to be kind of short term I can't you know plant apple trees and uh, asparagus and artichokes and all those like berries and stuff that I'd I mean I guess I could in buckets but I mean it's just it's a lot more work mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not kind of not there yet either you know it's, it's it's finding a way to devote more time to it. I don't like the idea of pride. Mm. Um, what I'm most grateful for is the amazing diversity that nature has given us, that we get to play with. Doing the work and seeing what comes of it is just so cool. And it's so, um, so remarkable to think about what nature does from a bulb to get a daffodil. What? <laughs> What? How is this happening? This is a miracle. There's miracles all over the place. That tree behind. <laughs> there were no trees here. Oh, really? Yeah. And yeah, we planted that. And it's, it's done well. Yeah. It's, so, it's a sweet bag magnolia, so it's really pretty flowers and they smell good. Um. Being able to feed my kids fresh stuff and teach them a lot of a, a lot of stuff. I mean, as a personal gardener, as that, but also within like community gardens and stuff, you're building a community. I mean, it's right, in, it's right in the name, and you're getting out there doing those things. Um, you know, that if if no one's there to teach somebody something, they they can't learn it. You know, yeah. and I'd rather be a resource than a you know a compost pile. Um, than, than just taking and taking, you know. Um, those relationships, those relationships in the community and stuff, I think really are what you don't realize come along with just planting some tomatoes in your backyard or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess that's the biggest thing is just being able to being able to reach out to people. You know. Tim Potts gardened because of his intrinsic love of plants and the beautiful biodiversity they had to offer. Lisa Bruce wanted to create a relaxing space in her home, and Jason Turner gardened to feed his kids as a form of therapy and to connect with and give back to the community around him. I set out to show how different all three gardeners were and instead found that they were very much the same. Although the intentionality behind the gardens may have varied, the desire to personally cultivate nature was apparent in all three gardeners. They showed me that the amount of land you have to work with does not determine your passion for gardening or your connectedness with nature.